So Puglisi, president, founder of Cyber Trading University, I'd like to thank you for all making it. Um, on the last week of August this is the last week of the summer. Uh, you know, I'm actually quite excited that there's a lot of people that are showing up today for today's event. Uh, usually, uh, this is like this is pretty much the slow time of the year when it comes to trading, and a lot of people are on vacation. But it looks like a lot of people are not, so that's good to hear. Or maybe you're just accessing on your cell phone, or you know, from your nice remote location, summer home. But the thing is this, I'm glad you guys are here because you are now starting getting into the busiest time of the year of trading, which is September, October, November. And what I like to talk about basically is how to control your emotions while you're trading or else, which we all know what could happen. And this applies to everybody. If you're a stock trader, if you're a forex trader, if you're an options trader, you know, you have to understand a little bit more of the psychology part, which we all could use a little bit, and some, you know, some good spirits of how to go out in there and do these trades. So let me just change the slide here really quick, ladies and gentlemen, and before we get started from our friends over here in the compliance department, our attorneys, we always want to make you just aware of our disclaimer that there's a very high risk in trading and past results are not indicative of the future return. In Cyber Trading University, and all its affiliates with this site assume no responsibility for trading investment results. To read more about our disclaimer, you can visit our homepage of our website. So. Things we're going to learn, ladies and gentlemen. Basically, we're going to talk about some of the things you probably don't want to probably know and how online brokers make money off you. We're going to talk about discipline, you know, how to be more disciplined when it comes in your trading, journaling. We're going to talk about some of the things that maybe a lot of you are not doing of journaling your trades and monitoring your trades. We're going to talk about one of, one of, one of the things I'm very famous for, and that is high-frequency trading. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I'm also going to cover about the KISS method, why most of you are reading charts backwards. I'm also going to talk about stocks that we've traded. You know, we run a professional trading room here at CyberTree University. Actually, there are some students here that actually are members of the Cyber Group Room. And we'll tell you a little bit about how you could join us for about two weeks uh, and see what it's like to be in a professional trading room where you could see people, real people like yourself, not just me, but people like you making thousands of dollars a day in trading and so much more. Now, before we go on and, and talk a little bit about and educate you guys, I just want to kind of do a quick little intro about Cyber Trading University and why you should be listening to what we're about to talk about and why it's so important to learn. Now, for some of you, I mean, you're probably familiar with Forbes magazine, one of the most prestigious magazines in the industry. Uh, there was a front page article uh, about a bunch of kids tormenting Wall Street, which were called Soz Bandits. Now, I am one of the original traders who started. When I started, there was about a 1,000 of us. Now, there's over 10 million of us all over the world. So you can look at me as being one of your great-great-grandfathers. I'm actually one of the, the pioneers who started the direct access trading, the day trading. And, um, you know, and over the years, I've been doing this for over 20 years. I love what I do. I think it's exciting. And the great thing about trading in the market is I get to talk to people like you to start taking matters in your own hands. Now, over the years, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to be talking about regarding about the psychology part of it. I'm going to talk about the big mistakes that I made. Because remember, before I became a very successful trader, I have also was an actual very successful loser because of what I'm about to talk about today. And over the years, and by living here in New York and being trained by the best traders in the world, um, I became a 12-time champion. I beat every single school that I competed against. So that, and you're going to get the opportunity not to just believe it in the challenge, but at the end of this presentation, you are all going to be invited to watch me trade live in the market to see actually how the game is being played. So I don't know how many of you have ever been in the driver's seat with a true professional trader putting his money where his mouth is. But you guys are going to get that opportunity at the end of this presentation if you want to stick around. And if you can't make it, don't worry about it because you can always go review the recording. But before we actually, I waste anyone's time to say, oh, I want to see that and that's great, Fausto. I want to see what made you, you know, make all this money and so on and how could you. But it's not about Fausto. It's about me. It's about you. 
how can I let, teach you to do it? Because that's the goal. Can Fausto teach you guys how to do it? And that's what basically what we're going to do. And the first biggest mistake, the number one most popular mistake, okay, is about when talking about discipline, it's controlling profits and losses. Now let's think about this for a second. How many of you here go into the market and have a game plan of how much money you want to make? I hate to use the word casinos. Let's look. Let's go go to a casino. How many of you actually go? I don't know if anybody here has gambled before. Um, I know there's quite a few of us. I mean, out there. But how many of you actually went there and says, you know what? My goal is I want to. I'm going to go to five hundred dollars and I want to make five hundred. I want to double my money. I want to make a hundred percent. Any of you here have that goal, or you go in there and like, you know what? When the day's over and I'm tired and I'll quit. But you and you basically. And how many of you have won? and then gave it all back, and then lost more. Just remember, Steve Wynn did not build those beautiful casinos on his own money. A lot of you, right? Look at those questions coming across. Many of you have. Okay, well, trading is a business. Okay, that is the first thing that you have to come across and understand. This is not investing. This is a business. And the first thing I teach my students is you have to know how much money you want to make a day. So I have a question for all of you. Um, how much money does everyone want? Look, I mean, realistically, no BS, but how much do you really want to make a year in the market? How much are you looking to make? 100,000, 50,000? What do you need to make to live or to kind of live a comfortable life? What are you looking to make? Will says 200. Vicky says 120. Lazio says 100. Edward says 50. Rich says 100. Erica says, I, my goal is to make um, 130. Okay, 40,000. Samuel says 200, 200, 30,000. Now, the, the thing, the, the reason why I ask this question is everyone's pockets are different, okay? So please don't misconstrue it. Someone says, oh, he, he wants to make a quarter million. Oh, big shot. You know, listen, that's, believe me, if you live here in Long Island where I live in New York, if you want to make a minimum of 100000 you're on the welfare line. I hate to say it. Okay, so I, I, I know everything about everyone, knows what they need to make, and everybody's different, and it's fine. Okay, but this is what my ultimate goal is, what I try to teach students. At the minimum, I try to train students how to make, you know, a minimum of 50 cents a day. 50 cents. I mean, think about it. What the hell is 50 cents? 50 cents? That's right. On a thousand shares, if you trade a thousand shares of stock, you make fifty cents. That's five hundred dollars a day. There's about twenty trading days in a year. That is about one hundred and twenty thousand a year. Fifty cents. You know what? We got people like here um, who mentioned it. Um, Mike, Mike, and Mike, and John, and 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 Ron. They all said, "I want to make fifty thousand." You know what? You know what you need to do to make fifty thousand? 20 cents a day. Now let's talk about the discipline part of it. Okay? Forget about the psychology. How many of you go into the market and have a goal and says, okay, I'm going to make my 20 cents and I'm going home? That's it. Andrea says, that is so true. And uh, Erica says, that's enlightening. Well, listen, before I became a very successful trader, like I mentioned to earlier, I became a very successful loser. Now, some of you might might have heard this story before because you were probably one of them. I was a young punk kid, thought I knew how to trade, my dad gave me some money, and I lost it all. Why? Because I was trying to hit grand slam home runs on every one of my trades. I never had a game plan. I was, I, I was always trying to shoot for the moon. I would trade stocks like U.S. Robotics and... And, and Cisco, and you know, back in the day, CMGI, maybe some of you guys remember those stocks. iOmega, you know, these stocks were going up. You know, in today's stocks, I would probably compare them to like Priceline, you know, Apple, um, the QQQs, you know, um, uh, Chipotle, you know, stocks that were like 600, 1,000, because I thought those were the only stocks out there to trade. But yet, when I finally hit rock bottom, and believe me, I don't know how many of you hit rock bottom yet, but it takes sometimes you really, really got hit rock bottom, and I finally threw up the white flags, and, you know, and 
for some of you, you're going to get the opportunity to get my book at the end of this uh, at the end of this meeting. Um, one of my one of my uh, mentors actually was my sister, and because she was the smart one who got educated, <laughs> that's basically it. I was the 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 ignorant guy that says, ah, no one needs to teach me. I, I want to be one of those self-taught individuals. Let me go get learn everything free on the internet, or let me go attend some free webinars, free, 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 and then let me go try it and see if I like it. And then, sure enough, for for what I lost in trading, I could I could I could have probably saved ninety five percent of my the money that I lost. Why? Because ignorance. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me carefully. You think education's expensive? Try ignorance. Okay? So I, there's not too many jobs I know that you could, buy, you, could, you could learn and step into a quarter of a million dollar job tomorrow. Okay? <laughs> My niece actually um, just is going to college right now. I have a lot of, a lot of nieces and nephews spending fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year to go to college and if they're lucky, they might find a job that might pay them thirty to fifty thousand when they get out. You know, here you have an opportunity to not spend a lot of money, a fraction of that, and go jump into, you know, a hundred and twenty quarter million dollar job. Um, Bobby, you know, yes, my book actually came out last week, and I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about it. It's the first day trading book that hasn't been out in twenty years. Last one was the Souls Bandits. So uh, and it's been and it's been sponsored. Um, the publisher is Wiley Publishing, which we'll, I, I'm actually very proud to announce, and we'll tell you at the end of this presentation about about the book. All right, but the thing is this: it's not the book is more or less. It's not just more of a bio. It's more of a, it's an educational book. It's a workbook. It's going to teach you how to trade. But uh, but before we get there, guys, you got to just understand. And my point, what I want all of you guys to understand, is that. Going into trading is like running a business. Anybody know the definition of running a business? What's the definition of a business? Anyone here know what the definition of a business is? That's right, Gabrielle, one of my students there, and, and, and Will. Uh, making money. Remember that. It's not charity, okay? It's not, you know, business is, is not about making friends. Okay, it's only business. It's funny. I was actually watching the Lego Movie with my 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 five year old son the other day, and it, I don't know if anyone ever saw the Lego Movie, but there's a there's a, there, the big the big actor in it is Will Farrow, and he's um, President Business, and um, you know he always said in the, in 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 the plot he goes, hey, listen, nothing personal. It's just business because he's looking to make money. So when we trade, ladies and gentlemen, one thing you have to understand is that. You have to have a game plan, and your game plan is to make money. And you have to treat trading like a business. So regardless about the psychology part about it, the discipline, the emotions, you first have to remember, are you capable of running a business? Because what do we all know about running a business? Anybody, anybody could tell me anything? Anyone here run, run, ran a business before? What could you tell me about running a business? Bobby says it's like running a franchise, OK? Uh, that's right. Derek just hit the nail right in the head, and I apologize. Some of you can't read their their emails, but um, but I will share with you. Um, I like Derek. Derek says, um, "Where where is it?" Okay. Uh, Derek says you have to invest the money first. Okay. So the thing is this: anybody here looking? Anyone here interested in a hundred thousand dollar year salary? How about a fifty thousand dollar year salary? Anyone here looking to work about an hour a day, making fifty thousand a year? An hour. That's all you really need. Trading's a part time job. Okay. Well, to do that is an investment. Okay. So anybody here that's looking to trade, okay, let me tell you to eliminate the psychology and the discipline part. So let's scratch psychology first. Let's talk about discipline. The discipline is you need to treat this like a business. And part of your business is making an investment. And so I just want to give you guys a heads up. There are no free lunches in running a business. There's no free rent. Okay? There's no free merchandise. There's no free employees. 
And I'm going to guarantee you one thing, you will always pay taxes. So let's talk about the discipline part and the psychology, which is one of the topics that we're talking about. If you want to be successful, you have to treat this like a business. So if anyone here is thinking that you're going to get into trading and, it's, and you're going to do it for free and you're going to sit there on YouTube and you're going to you know, read books and everything and think you're going to go learn on your own, let me tell you, you have a, a basically 90% failure rate. Being a profitable, successful trader, the first thing you need is a mentor. That's the way you have to look at it. So that's the ultimate goal when it comes to trading. So let's talk about the psychology part of it. The psychology part of it is, you know, you have to keep in mind that trading is a job, it's not investing. I'm going to keep repeating that. Okay, you might not like your job at some point, but at the end of the day, you need somebody that is going to be on top of you. All right? Running a business is not easy. Running a, starting out of business is even harder if no one if you don't even know why you're getting into the business. Think about it. One of you just mentioned, who brought it up? Um, Bobby Tan brought it up. It's like running a franchise. I don't know if Bobby ran a franchise, but Bobby, you're running a franchise. You just don't buy a franchise, right? Don't they train you? Don't, they, don't you have to spend money to go there and, and you want to open up a Dunkin' Donuts or whatever? You think you just, you just start making Dunkin', you just start making donuts? You think Dunkin' Donuts is going to let you make donuts for them if you don't even know how to make them? There's a big training process that comes along with it, okay? Because it's, it's, it's a job. It's not investing. You're not investing in Dunkin' Donuts. You're not investing in a franchise, right? That would be great. But no, you want to make money. You want to own the business. You're not looking to invest. You want to you wanna own it. That's why you're here. So you have to treat it like a job. Now, one of the big mistakes that I find that people make is they don't keep a diary of what they've done. How many of you here know somebody that filed bankruptcy? Or I hate to say, maybe, maybe some of you have. What was the main reason, why do you think somebody filed bankruptcy? What was the main reason? Anybody could tell me? What's the most popular reason why somebody probably filed bankruptcy? Martin says no rules. Bobby Tan says mismanagement. Anyone else? Run out of money. Overspent. Failed to plan. Um, the economy came bad. Okay, well, I would say that's the most popular, but that definitely has something. Has no discipline, Martin is saying. Great. Rich says debt. Steve says couldn't pay. They wasted all their money, Carl. Kim says no game plan. Okay. Martin says no education. <laughs> Failing to, uh, to balance his budget. All right, well, as a trader, one thing I try to teach my students is keeping a diary of what you've done, managing your money. How many of you here can honestly say that you manage your money? How many of you honestly can say that at the end of the day, when you trade, you know exactly why you made money and why you lost money? How many of you here could say that you have, you print up your charts, you draw trend lines, you know why you bought it here, why you lost money there? A lot of you are saying, nope, not me. That's, and guess what? That's why you're here, right? You're here to hear the reality that you have the opportunity to be in the best job in the world but you are obviously making the number one biggest mistake. You are your, your own worst enemy. Think about it. Would you give your money to a mutual fund or a hedge fund or you know, uh, an IRA company or anybody that never learned finance? What do you think you're doing? You may think they just open up shop and says, oh yeah, I want to start managing people's money. You're going to give, you, you're going to give them your money? Of course not. Well, guess what? What do you think you're doing? You got to keep that in mind. So, the 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 thing that is most popular that most of you need to do is you need a mentor. And if you can look from the photo here, you can see that there's a guy behind there, a little ghost. Yeah, a little ghost right there. That ghost, let's say, is me, and you're the other person. You need someone to be on top of you and let you know what you're doing right and wrong. Remember, you you're going to be wrong. And you know, I always tell my students, and hopefully this puts some light on it, I like losing money. 
I mean, it's, and that sounds crazy. I do like losing money. You know why? Because if I didn't lose money, I would never learn how to make money. Remember, losing money is a good thing because if you know why you lost, you're not going to do it again, right? Think about it. You made a mistake once, you're not going to make the same mistake twice. And if you do, guess what? Trading is not for you. But the only way you're going to know that is someone has to tell you and train you how to do it. Discipline. Controlling your temper. Anyone here? A um, couple of questions coming across here. Um, yes, uh, Bobby Tan says a question. Yes, uh, we all need to mentor, but it's, it's hard to find the great ones. And also having a mentor is also expensive. Only people like Tiger Woods can. Well, Bobby, that's really not true. Everybody here can afford somewhat of education, okay? And, and that's the way you have to look at it. Listen, if you can't afford education, then you don't, can't afford to trade. That's the, that's, that's the best advice I can give everybody here. And, and think about it, Bobby. Even the best athletes in the world, like Tiger Woods, have trainers, okay? Do you really think he needs to have a trainer? Of course, you know, he's got five coaches. Actually, just heard an announcement on the radio that he fired his, 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 uh, his, one, of his, one of his coaches. You know, and you would think, like, why would a guy need, to, need a coach? You know, a guy's great at what he is. Well, guess what? We all need coaches. Okay, that's part of the discipline that they have them for. A lot cheaper than paying for a mentor than losing money without one. That's right. <laughs> You're absolutely right about that. Uh, Uh, another question coming here. Without education, trading uh, trading losses will quickly exceed the education cost from Wayne. That's absolutely true. Okay, but the thing that you have to understand. Remember what today's topic is all about. Okay, control emotions or else. Well, part of your emotions is that I'm going to give everybody a guarantee. You're going to die one day, and you always pay taxes. But most of all, the stock market's not going out of business. So don't ever worry about it. That we, you know, you hear all this news. You know, the, the Dow Jones breaking in all-time highs. You know, we're breaking. Um, you know, is the gold rush over? Listen, as long as there's volatility, back in 2008 when the market crashed, you know, I made more money back then than I that I, I still have never made in 20 years ever in in, in trading and the market crashed. You can make money going long, you can make money going short. Unfortunately, catastrophes make for opportunities. But the thing you got to remember is how to control those emotions. Because if you're an emotional person, then trading is not for you. Just let you know that. Because what's going to happen is you get emotional, you're going to try to get even, and then you're going to end up doing things, you know, we all know, and every one of us have lost our temper. I mean, I mean, how many of you are married, and you probably had an argument with your spouse, okay, and wish you didn't say the things you, you, you did? You know why you said you said out of anger? You know, well, trading is the same thing. If you're trading out of anger, you lose your, you lose your mental thought, you train the thought, you're going to try to get even, and you're going to lose more. So the thing is this. As, let's just say I'm mentoring all of you. Let's say all of you are my students. And you know, and if you want to, if, if if anyone here is looking for a mentor, and you want to me to mentor you, um, just call our office, talk to our education advisors. But let me just tell you how I kind of mentor my students, with starting with the discipline and starting off. First of all, what I usually do, I tell everyone you should have a brokerage account. That's like giving the keys to your teenager and never learn how to drive. You just, it's just, it's just, it's not a matter of if; it's a matter of when you're going to blow up your account because you're actually stepping into something you have no idea what's going on, okay? That's mistake number one. What I usually do when I train my students, and, and this is where your discipline has to come in, you have to learn how to practice trading. If you're doing options you know, um, or stocks or futures or forex, you should go out there and sample what's going on. And every single one of you should really go out there and try all the markets because, you know, and everyone's a case-by-case -case basis. You know, I had a student I was just talking to the other day. He says, Fausto, you know, um, I finally realized that, I, you know, I should have learned stocks first 
instead of learning options because you know it's the movement of this stock that uh, that makes the option move. But he's, but she spent so much money on options that she, you know now she felt like she wasted her money. But at the end of the day, she still wanted to learn. She still wanted to do this as a career. So she had to take a step back because she was advised the wrong way because she thought that that was the only thing she could do is trade options. So what I always tell everyone is that you should, you should sample a little bit about everything, see what you like, and then find the mentor that you like, and then go from there. Everybody, everyone here is different. So that's something you have to look at. Keith says, you were the same, Keith? Well, you know, Keith, everybody makes that mistake, Keith, and, and that's fine, you know. I'm just, sometimes you just got to be, you just have to admit that you're wrong and you got to take a step back to get two steps forward. Always look at it that way. Uh, Bobby, thanks again for that compliment. Bobby says, you're right, 100%. I, you know, Bob, I've been there. I've been doing this for 20 years. I, I've trained hundreds of thousands of people over the years, hundreds of thousands. I do speakings all over the world. If you, if you, you, a lot of you probably have brokerage firms. You'll see I've done speakings with them in the past, you know. But the thing is this: you have to, um, you know, sometimes, you know, there's got to be a little bit of a wake-up call there. Like, for example, how many of you here start trading with hundred share lots, starting small and, and start practicing and seeing that you're consistent? Probably not. How many of you are doing a minimum of five trades a day to learn? Probably not. How many of you, you know, are, 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 are trading big block shares and still not making money? Maybe you should take a step back, you know? Nobody here should be trading big block shares until at least you have some experience. Are you having fun? Is anyone, when you're trading, are you having fun or are you depressed and trying to get even? That's a problem. Trading is a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And you know what the greatest thing about it all? It actually pays you money, too. <laughs> um, Sammy says, I've been trading for two months, and you're still losing. Well, th that's the thing that you have to look at it, Samuel. That's why you have to take a step back you know, and, and analyze what you're doing on, on your trades before you can start moving forward, be a little more aggressive. Remember, the stock market's not going out of business, Samuel. Okay. Now, to succeed in trading, well, first of all, you have to analyze your trades. At the end of the day, how many of you are actually doing that? It's a little checkbox for you. How many of you are, 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 are learning from those mistakes? How many of you are here afraid to lose money? Anyone here afraid to lose money? Anyone afraid to lose money? Wow, we're getting a few people are saying you lose, uh, that you're afraid to lose money. Well, let me tell you about, about losing money. If you're afraid to lose money, you shouldn't be trading because you're going to lose. It's part of the game. Do you know a baseball player, when they go up to bat, the best baseball players, if you're a great baseball player, you're batting over 300. That means you're striking out 700% of the time. What I like to teach my students, <laughs> we're not looking at bat 300, we're looking at bat about 700. So we're, you know, we're going to lose 300% of the time, but 700% out of 1,000. So for every seven winning trades, maybe we're going to lose three. You can't go into trading and think you're going to lose. But if you follow those rules, you still will succeed. That's right, Gillis. And Gillis says, nope, because it's a game and you learn that this way. Exactly. So if anybody's here is afraid to lose money, I'm just going to give you some quick advice. Do yourself a favor. Quit while you're ahead because it's part of the game. You're going to lose. The, remember what I just mentioned about succeeding. To, be, to lose, you've got to learn from the losing. So you don't do that again. That's how you become great as a trader. Now, a lot of us go into trading and, and, and with brokerage firms accounts and you know we think we're going to get a great deal you know let me explain something to you about great deals the great deal is like this car okay great condition ten thousand dollars it's on sale you gotta buy it a lot of you don't realize the infrastructure 
in the backbone of trading. Just because you think you're getting a good deal doesn't mean you're really getting a good deal. Just because a brokerage firm is giving you good ticket charges doesn't mean you're getting a good deal. Okay, just because you know you learned something on on um, for free doesn't mean you got a good deal. A good deal. What my dad always taught me, he says that my my dad always taught me, and you could pass this to your children and pass it on. The only thing that's free is the cheese in the mouse trap. Okay, when something is free, there's something wrong. There's something wrong when something's free. Nobody makes money by doing things for free or giving you a very cheap price. It's impossible. They, they, got, they, they got bills to pay. They got electric to pay. They got employees to pay. There's something wrong. So let me tell you what the number one things people that do that make things wrong. They go out there and they open up a brokerage account because they think they're getting a good deal. Because they know the name, they, they, they see the commercial, maybe they got sold on some baby commercial, you know, on the Super Bowl. But let me explain to you the true fact of the, of the number one reason why people lose money is opening up a brokerage account with the wrong company. Now let me explain something to you. Brokerage firms are like in the casino business, okay? They're trading against you. And, and anyone ever heard of dark pools? Anybody here heard of a dark pool before? A lot of you have? Okay, good. At the end of the presentation, I'm going to give you my email. If you want to read a good article on dark pools, I'll give it to you. Basically, what a dark pool is, is like this diagram right here. You're sending your order to a brokerage firm. They're going to sell it to another brokerage firm through payment for order flow. If they don't, it goes through a trading system. They're going to see if they have stock and in inventory. Basically, they're not even buying the stock for you. They're selling stock that they already own or they're going to cross it with another customer in, in their brokerage account. That's a dark pool. If they don't, um, hold on, let me get my uh, pointers out here. There we go. Okay. That's the dark pool right here. The firm uh, against their in inventory to fill an order. If they don't, it goes to a trading desk. They have what's called a direct access system. They're going to buy it on the bid, sell to you on the offer. They're going to tell you about this great deal that you got on the ticket charge, and then your order gets executed. I mean, sounds like a lot of work, what it, what it, what it goes through. But this is realistically uh, a cookie-cutter crash course of how online brokers make money on your order. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not in the business for a brokerage firm to make money on my order. I want a stock, especially in today's volatility. i got to get executed. Okay? I can't wait for them to make money on my order. So... That's what online brokerage firms do. That's how they route their orders. Now, um, sometimes if you want to see a change for the better, you have to take, uh, take things in your own hands. And a lot of the students that we train here at CyberTrain University, um, and a lot of students that I train, are starting to realize now, with today's technology, you could do things all on your own. You don't need a brokerage firm anymore. You, a market maker or, or an online broker or a stock broker, you could do everything else. You know why? Because nobody, nobody is going to care about your money more than you. So what do you need them for? Right? Think about it. You do really think a mutual fund cares about your money? All they care about is commissions. You think they care they put you in a bad stock? You know what? If they're lucky, they're going to make you money. But at the end of the day, don't they charge you fees? Don't they charge you like a lot of money to be part of something? Why, why do you do that? What do they need you for? You know? So the thing is this. Take matters in your own hands. If you like Forex, what do you need a Forex broker to do it for? A stock broker? Just do it yourself. You know, the, the, these brokerage firms, companies like FXCM, you know, they give you the technology. You know, companies like Thinkorswim, you know, Trade Monster, you know, with direct access for the options, they give you the tools. What do you need, what do you need a mutual fund for? To make, what, 5% a year? We do that in a day. And well, I'm going to show you some of the stocks that we trade today. So let's become better traders. And how do we do that? We start by learning. 90% of your time, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be spent on education. Only 10% of your time is spent on trading. So let's talk about discipline here. 
Let's control our emotions here. Listen to what I'm telling you. 90%. How many of you spend 90% of your time on training to learn how to trade? Anyone here spend 90% of your time? Alex says only 50%. David does. Wow, that's not a lot. I'm only getting like 15 people that's saying yes. So, once again, look at yourself in the mirror. Are you spending 90% of your time learning how to trade? Because only 10% is only, only supposed to be spending 10% of your time trading in the market. It's not a full-time job. So, what do we need to do? We need to find a direct access broker. Now, I always tell everybody, um, I always tell my, uh, my students, and hopefully I'm going to get the opportunity to mentor all of you. I know I, I'm mentoring a lot of you now that are here. But the thing, the first thing, you know, about brokerage accounts, about learning, don't worry about a brokerage account. Okay? Look at me as your parent. You're my child. Okay? You want to drive a car. You got, you just, you just, you just passed, you just got to 16 years old, you can get your permit. Okay? Well, apparently, the, D the Department of Motor Vehicles says you don't have to get permits. You could just start driving tomorrow. Could you imagine, could you imagine, you know, giving the keys to your child that doesn't even know how to drive, what do you think is going to happen to him? It's going to crash. He might even kill himself, God forbid. But you being a parent, you're smarter than that, and you're not going to do that. Well, I'm telling you I'm your parent. I'm telling you this. You open up a brokerage account, you've got a 90% chance of failing because you don't know what you're looking at. You don't see the high-frequency trades. You don't see the buyers and sellers. You're trading stocks that are out of your league. 95% of you are trading stocks that I wouldn't even trade. I wouldn't even put in my worst enemy's account. Why? Because you didn't, you didn't realize that there's 10,000 other stocks out there in the market that will give you less risk with more reward. I'll give you an example. Did anybody hear about a stock symbol tube? T-U-B-E-E? -E? We're going to check it out a little bit later. But anybody, anybody um, anyone saw that stock? T U B E. Go check it out. This is a stock that we traded this morning, and we'll come back and we'll and I'll show you a little bit later. But I bet you all heard about Facebook today. I bet you all heard about Apple today. I bet you all went back and looked at QQQs or Bank of America. But anyone look at the stock tube? Not enough. Cool move today. That's what Dave's saying in tube. Yeah, and that's only one. Got a whole lot of those. You got N N T W K. You know, you got uh, G A L T. We had a, a really big winner the other day. Uh, D G L Y. Why don't you check out that one? Want to see a really good stock that we trade on Monday? Look at this one. Um, hold on, let me just fix the colors over here. Why is my colors for there we go um, look at this stock D G L Y stock that we trade on Monday I'll show you a little bit later what it is he said I made a lot of money on that trade <laughs> I know a lot of our students did that's what we do in the trading room all right so is this stock going up or down well the thing that we also want um, kind of teach everybody is that a lot of people get hooked on charts okay and actually that's the that's the last thing I teach I never teach people learning charts but for some reason and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of prove it to you what makes charts go up and down is the movement of the stock okay so if you're looking at a chart guess what you're, you're delayed you want to be a, you want to be a leader or you want to be a follower all right well do you want to trade on past history or you want to trade on present so the thing when it comes to trading is you need to have a game plan, and one of the things that we teach at Cybertrain University is following something called high-frequency trades. Now, I'm an expert on high-frequency trades. I was actually one of the beta testers when they first came out, but does anyone here follow high-frequency trades? You know, basically, they, it runs about 70% of the volume. The thing is, a few, not, not too many of you. There you go. Think about it. What, ask yourself a question. What would you pay 
If you were able to learn and monitor 70% of the volume, if you're in a stock right now, anyone here in any positions? Anybody in the stock right now? Just give me a chat. What, what are you in? Erica's long Google. Okay. David says only in options. Okay, good. Jovan's in Facebook, IBM, Twitter. Okay, so anyway, David's in uh, JCPenney. Okay, D David, just really quick. Do you know where 70% of the volume is moving on uh, JCPenney? Jo no. Okay, w if you were able to see 70% of volume, how much is that worth to you? Okay. So everybody, Jovan, same thing for you. Um, Mike, same thing for you. Twitter, I got a few people. I mean, what does it work to you? Would you was it worth to see? Because listen, you you probably got who knows, ten thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars invested in a stock position right now, even if it's an option. Wouldn't it be nice to know where 70% of the volume is? Wouldn't it be nice to know that you have big block orders of 75,000 still looking to buy it versus 2,000 that looking to sell it? Because remember, how do stocks or options or Forex or futures go up? It all goes up due to supply and demand. So how many of you here are, are doing that? And you know what? That was one of my biggest mistakes. My biggest mistakes. So what do you do? What you need to do is follow the money. Now, this is something that I was trained on the first day on the job. When I threw up the white flags and I was so upset and depressed, you know, um, just totally negged down and lost a lot of money. When I finally brought up, brought up the, um, when I finally got out there and uh, admitted when I was wrong, the first thing my mentor taught me, he showed me this. And I'm going to show all of you um, at the end of this presentation. If you want to join me, I'll show you in the markets. I'll give you everyone a two-week opportunity for me to show you how to see this stuff. But um, you know, basically, just by seeing that made me realize and took a whole bunch of bricks off my chest, made me realize, you know what? I deserve everything that happened to me. I really did. I deserved everything that happened to me. Because how how stupid could I be not knowing that that data was available and I wasn't using it? And you know why I didn't know I was using it? Because I wasn't trained how to use it. And I, I didn't want to know about it. So that's where my mentor has taught me something called tradable trend and trap. Okay? What this means is the three things that we've learned in trading is that you need to know if, if you can get, you know, tradable basically means what is your risk? You know, what is the spread? What are you risking to go into it into that position? Remember, this is a business, okay? And part of business, there's risk that comes along with it. What are you risking? And the next thing you have to look at, where's the trend? You know, are, is the trend up? Is the trend down? Am I reading a chart properly? And then the trap, you know, are market makers going out there and doing reverse psychology? Think about it. There are winners and there are losers. Okay, somebody here is, two of you are going to be trading the same stock, and one of you are going to buy it, or one of you are going to sell it. Well, guess what? There's only one winner, and market makers are not in the business to lose money. They spend a lot of money, but the thing is this, you're going to be competing against them, and actually, one of my, my book's title is How to Beat Market Makers in Their Own Game, because I was a market maker. Now, the thing is this, if any of you here are planning on doing trading as a career, you better be able to know how to shadow brokerage firms. Because you and I are just trying to get the crumbs on the floor. We're the ants on the floor. Okay? These guys are moving 50, 100,000 share lots, and that data is available to you. But there are a lot of you here that basically don't know what you're looking at and trading blind other than that you know the name of the stock. And that is part of the discipline part. You've got to know and treat trading like a business. Let's look at this example, okay? Um, uh, Bobby said it would be nice uh, if it was also for futures. It is, it is. And actually, you know, um, 
the thing is this, who taught you how to trade futures? You know, and there's not a lot of people that are very good at it. And if you're interested in learning futures, you know, I personally don't teach futures, but I have, a, uh, I have you know, there's a few people that I would highly recommend that were one of the top schools and one of the top traders on the floor that will show you exactly how to trade futures. But you have to be disciplined enough to go out there and sit back and learn from them. That's what, yeah, if that's what you really want to do. Now let's talk about refreshing. Okay, this is, I'm going to teach you a little strategy right here. Okay, um, do you guys ever notice that when you buy a stock, as soon as you buy it, the thing goes down, and then as soon as you sell it, it goes up, and sometimes you think of like somebody's watching you. Has that ever happened to anyone? <laughs> I'm getting a lot of LOLs. <laughs> happens to you all the time, John. Warren, same thing. That's okay. It, it happens to a lot of people. And, um, but you could prevent that from happening. One of the things that I kind of teach my students is something called refreshing. Um, market makers, what they'll do is they, when they sell stocks, they will basically sell a little bit at a time because they can't sell all of it at one time. So they kind of the way they kind of play the game is is this. Think about it for a second. If you had something to sell, you had to sell something, and you had a lot of it to sell. How are you going to make it? How are you going to sell it? and not make it look too obvious. What do you need to do? Can anyone answer that? Derek says sell small portions. Okay, what else? You have a lot of shares to sell, but you don't want everybody to know that you're selling it. How are you going to get around to selling it? Piece by piece, Ken, okay. Uh, get help from other sellers. There you go. Derek hit the nail right in the head. Exactly. Okay. So one thing that I train you um, at Cybertrain University, um, a couple of things what you need to do. The only way to get people to buy something is to make the people that are buying it think the stock is going up. So they kind of play reverse psychology. They'll, they'll route orders through ECNs. They might even work with another brokerage firm. And a lot of this data, you could see it. It's called refreshing. They'll keep updating their quote and keep selling piece by piece, or they might route it through another brokerage firm and sell it. Okay, so if you understand, because their goal is they're trying to sucker in buyers. Okay, they have a, a big order, they got to sell it. They're looking to move money. They're looking to make money. The only way they can get people to buy it is people like you that have no clue what you're doing, uh, and, and not in a bad way. It's just that's why you're here, right? You're here to learn it. So you want a reality check. Well, the reality check is. You know, here, some of you are probably sitting there twiddling your thumbs and like, well, how much more is this market going to go up? You know, why didn't I buy at the bottom when the market was 7,000 back in 2009? I'm not looking to sound like a genius, but you know what? You could have saw that coming. You could have saw, yeah, I'll give you a great example. Um, I've done a class, um, I've, I've been doing classes since, you know, like I said, since two, uh, 2000, uh, 1995, okay? It's over 20 years. And I, I had people telling me, he says, Fausto, how much lower is Citibank going to go? How much lower could it possibly go? I'm losing all my money. I remember doing speakings up in Canada and Toronto. Um, I had this one guy that said he basically mortgaged his house. He, and he's like, and all he kept on doing is he was bashing, <laughs> not in a bad way, but he's like, you know, you Americans made me lose all my money. Citibank, I can't believe it. And I said, first of all, I mean, and no disrespect, but you're the idiot that bought all the stock. I mean, who taught you? Who told you to buy all that stock? Did you see that they were still dumping it? He's like, well, how do you know that? Well, it's common sense. If you, someone trained you, you would see them on the ECNs just dumping it away. He says, well, when do you know when to buy? He says, when they jump on the bid. He says, how do you see that? Well, that's what I show you. That's what you need to learn. He says, well, could you do it now? He says, I, I could show you now, but doesn't he's buying it now? They buy it piece by piece. You see the orders, and I'll never forget. I'll never forget, I was watching um, one of the big market makers back then, I think it was, um, who was trading, I think it was a lot, I think it was UBS Bank, and they had an order out there, um, I was watching on the ECN actually, uh, one of the um, high frequency trades, and there was a million share buyer out there at a dollar and a penny, it never hit a buck, and he was sitting there for about seven, all day, several hours, and I watched these orders, kept hitting him, Million shares, million shares, million, and he just would not drop. And he says, you know what, there's got to be the bottom. 
the guy, because I've been watching it, I saw people telling me from 10 to 3, and he was just sitting there on the bid, just buying million share lots. Think about it. When you guys go into a trade, do you see those orders? Do you see that buyer keep buying it and buying it? Do you see that on time and sales? No, but that's what you need to learn. And that was, you know, obviously the beginning of the stock that made its big rally. By the way, that million share buyer was the government. <laughs> you probably heard about it after when the government says they were buying a bunch of uh, Citibank, right? Well, there you go. And they sold it all at, what, a five? Good for them. Good trade for them. Even they can manipulate the market. Um, but anyway, you need to know how to play the game. You need to know how to go out there, see the orders, see who's buying it, see if they're really buyers, see if they're really sellers, get in, get out, because if you don't, the stock will keep going down on you, and you can see all these buyers at 810 and says, oh, the stock is definitely going higher, and then look at all those buyers, and then bam, stock, now you're down to 802. You still see buyers, and this thing is still trending down. You need to know how to play the game. Remember, it's called, you know, it's, a, it's like a cat and mouse chase. You got to know to be able to see it. So, getting back to the 10%, 90% rule. Training is a part-time job. It's not a full-time job. So the thing that we kind of teach here at Cybertrain University, we show you how to play the game, how to get in, how to get out, more or less trade at the most volatile times of the market. How many of you here would like to work about 30 minutes a day? I, I know that sounds like, yeah, Fausto, who wouldn't? I, I'm serious. It's not a full-time job. Trading is a part-time job. There's a very small window if you're trading futures, if you're trading Forex, if you're trading stocks. There are certain times during the day when certain markets open up, when they become more volatile, and there's times of the day when the market's been open over the course of the day, which is dead. And you need to learn how to do that. Now, for specifically for stocks, the first 30 minutes of the open is where we make most of our money, and the last 30 minutes of the close. Here's the stock, look at this one, ISR. Stock right here at the open, we're from $1.90 to 260. Now by the way, is anyone here nervous or scared to trade stocks under $5? Anyone here scared? Because I have people always tell me, they say, oh, I don't trade penny stocks. First of all, these are not penny stocks. They're all NASDAQ national. It wouldn't come up on an execution system. Secondly, what are you scared about? Other than you're risking less money with more reward? You know, I mean, so listen, a dollar ninety minus a dollar two sixty. What is that? Seventy cents in thirty minutes. Bought a thousand shares. You made what's your risk? Nineteen hundred bucks. You made seven hundred dollars. Not bad for a day's pay, for a very small investment. So timing during the day is very, very critical. And then we're coming to charts now. Let's talk about charts. Um. Can anybody read this? Anybody know we got, we got, anyone here use Bollinger Bands? Anybody use Stochastics? Anybody here use those? How about Pivot Points? Anybody use those? Use Bollinger Bands? Okay. Wow, we're getting a lot of people. That's great. Okay, but now do you feel like him? How many of you here look at charts and hear these people talking about all these things about charts and then sitting there and you still can't figure it out? Anyone here watch TV, watch CNBC? How many charts do you think are, who are the best traders in the world? The guys on the floor of the exchange, that's why they're there, right? How many charts do you see? You know, one thing I kind of train people is something called the KISS method. Keep it super simple. Some of you guys are making charts so complicated. And, and, and remember, indicators were invented by mathematicians, not by traders, okay? So I don't know about you, but I'd rather watch orders than indicators. I would, I would rather watch that 70,000 share buyer than what happened, you know, on a, on a 200 moving average. I, I'm not here to trade the average. I'm here to trade reality. Orders are more powerful because it's the orders that make the stock move. And if you're waiting for the stock to move and then, and then but you're trading off the indicator, guess what? You're too late. Because you know what the problem with indicators are? They're lagging. They work for investing, they work for swing trading, you know, they, but when it comes for actively trading, you're wasting your time. 
Now, finding stocks, finding stocks are not really that hard, ladies and gentlemen. One thing I'm going to invite all of you guys to do, if you want to come and join me, uh, we run a professional trading room. Um, anyone ever heard of, ever, anyone ever been in a, in a professional trading room with, with true professional traders that trade every day, full time, market makers? Well, we run, we've basically been doing this for over 20 years. Um, I, I run the trading room. I'm the president and founder of the company. I, love, I, I run the trading room. I have other instructors, too, that also work for Cybertree University. The thing is this. You know, if, if anyone wants to see you know, that I'm not blowing smoke and listen from true traders and see what they're making and listen and see students that are making maybe the $200 a day or traders that are making you know, $10,000 or $20,000, $50,000 a day, you know, hopefully, hopefully everyone here will join me for it. Now, here's a stock that we traded today on a short, A run. Anyone hear about A run? Right here at the open, 930. Stock went from $22 down to 2090. What is that? Almost a $2 move in what? 30 minutes? No one heard about A run. Look it up. This is what we traded this morning. Big winner. Tube. Here's the one I was telling you earlier. Right here at 930. In less than an hour, the stock went from 1180 all the way to 14.10. Anyone here interested in that stock? What does Tube do? I don't know, and I really don't care, and I don't want to know. And, it's, and it doesn't matter because I don't own it anymore. The thing is this. You made money in the stock. It was up. Tube was up literally um, when it was here. It was up over 40, almost 50% when it hit 14 bucks. Forget about the $3 move. If you were only able to get just chased it, just this little move right here, you would have made 20 cents. 20 cents would have been 200 bucks. Okay? Even if you chased it here, or you chased it here, or you chased it here, regardless, even if you didn't make it for the big move, money is money. So that's the way how you have to look at it. Now, there, were there other stocks out there? There were plenty of other stocks out there, ladies and gentlemen, that are moving. But um, anyone here, by the way, have ever been in a professional trading room? Uh, no, I'm only showing my slideshows. No, not yet. Ken? Jim, no. John, you never been in a trading room? Sam, obviously, a few of you are my students, obviously. Okay. This is the way, and this is my advice to all of you, okay? Does anybody here want to trade and do this as a career? Are you guys like, maybe, you know, you, you see, you know maybe you're, you're semi-retired or you're retired, you want to trade your own IRA, or maybe you're unemployed or you're too qualified to go back to work, you know, maybe you want to start benefiting in one of the best jobs in the world in trading. I mean, how many of you here want to do that? Well, this is what my advice to you if you want to do this right. First of all, every single one of you need a mentor. Okay? You're not going to learn it in a one hour presentation. You're not going to learn it in the week. It takes months to learn it. Which is not a, it's not a far cry for kids that go to college for four years and if you want to be a doctor you have to go you know it could be for six to ten years. You know? Everybody wants to be doctors and lawyers because they think they make the most money. You know what? Ever thought about being in the stock market? We make the most money. Have you guys ever lived, anyone here from New York? You ever look at some of the houses they rent out in the Hamptons? I think the one that, there was one that was rented for three months. Um, somebody paid over five or $10 million, um, a hedge fund manager, just to rent the house for three months. Three months, $10 million. Three months. Could you imagine? It was a $150 million home, but I didn't hear a doctor rent it. I didn't hear a, doctor, a lawyer rented it. What was it? guys in the financial market. So the thing is this, you all need mentors, all right? And what I always recommend all of you guys to do before you get a mentor and, and, and sit there and learn for the next several months with him is you should all sample out and make sure that that mentor see how, you, how they trade. That's what I like to do with my students. I was trained uh, the way you know, my students became my students, hopefully you're going to be my student, is they watch me trade and it says, you know, Fausto, I like your style. I understand you. 
you speak my language. You speak in layman terms. You're not confusing. Maybe I am, but you know, maybe I won't. But the only way to start out is to learn small. So that's the way how you, ha how you have to look at it. Um, by the way, if anybody wants that article on dark pools, um, I'll give you my email address so you can basically get it. So listen, I'm telling you right now, trading is one of the best jobs in the world. Actually, the best job in the world is being a caretaker on an island in, 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 uh, in, 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 in any tropical island. Second best job is being a trader. Why? Because you could do this anywhere in the world. You could do it in your pajamas, do it from a luxury home, and you don't need to spend a lot of money to do it. You don't have to open up a business. You're going to pay rent. You don't need employees. All you need is the education to do it. By doing that, you could spend more time with your friends, maybe your family, take the day off to play golf, whatever it may be. It's a great job. But the hardest, and the hardest part of this job is the training process. But once you learn how to train, that's why you do it. Now, I get a question people always ask me. This is Fausto. If you're such a great trader, why do you teach? You know why? I do both. I love what I do. Um, I love what I do. And the honest truth, I started when I was 22 years old. I was semi-retired at the age of 24. After two years of, of, of making a lot of money in the market and working an hour a day, my, my wife today, which is my girlfriend, says, listen, you, you know, we, you got to do something else. So, you know, I, I saw an opportunity to start teaching people because everybody would tell me, oh, you know, how many of you heard people tell you, oh, you're going to trade, you're going to lose all your money? And it, it just got to the point where I says, you know what, that's not true. I make money. And people says, oh, you're lucky. I says, no, I'm not lucky. I just, I, I just did it the right way. I learned how to do it. So I do both. I trade and I teach, and I love what I do. I have a passion to do it. And that's why all of you guys are here. And if you have the passion to learn how to trade, maybe one day you can go out and start teaching other people too, because that's also my goal. Because a lot of my students do two things. They come work for me, or they open up their own schools. Okay, And, and I, we need more people like you to go out there and spread the word to go start training more people, because it's just too much negativity, and there's too much politics where people are trying to prevent you from going out there and taking matters in your own hands. And the only way you're going to be, be convinced to be successful is that you have to be successful. And the only way you're going to be successful is you need to learn how to do it right. And that's what it took, it took me. And that's why some of the top brokerage firms in the industry, companies like Thinkorswim, FXEM, Lightspeed, Trade Monster, which I just did a speaking with them in Vegas. I'm actually going to be in New York doing a presentation on a New York Stock Exchange, you know, because they all know the biggest reason why people fail, and because these brokerage firms want you to succeed, because if you succeed, you'll be a client of theirs forever. But they, a lot of these brokerage firms can't train you the way we teach you because of compliance purposes. That's why you have to go out there and learn. Now, um, I can see we got an email request for slides for today, and I can see your email. Yes, no problem. You, I'm going to get you your slides. Absolutely, Nick. Um, for some of you, just kind of repeat a little bit, maybe you logged in a little bit late, but um, you know, I'm the president and founder of Cybertrain University. I'm a 12-time champion at the Money Show and Traders Expo. We were also ranked number one school six years in a row by Equities Magazine. Now, if anybody here wants to start learning, anyone here could um, want to be in a professional trading room? Anybody here want to join me for a professional trading room? Okay, I'm, I got two things I'm going to be offering you guys. My book just came out September, I mean, August 17th, okay? Um, I just ordered, you can go buy it online right now. You can buy it for Kindle, but this is what I'm going to do if you buy it through us. First of all, you're going to get an autographed copy. And second, as a bonus, I'm going to give you two weeks of my professional trading room. So you're going to get two great promotions. You're going to get the book, and you get two weeks in my live trading room for $49. Okay, it's cheaper. The advantage of buying it through us than not going through uh, Amazon or uh, going through um, uh, Barnes and Noble and buying my book that just came out is that you're going to get two weeks of my free training and an autographed copy. Okay, now for some of you want to come and just join me tomorrow for a live demonstration of what we traded in the morning. 
Um, you're all invited to come and join me for free. It doesn't cost you anything. I'll give you guys the links where to go to get those. But basically, you could join me for free at 11 o'clock. Um, you, you all could register again, and we'll get you registered. You probably got the email again. Um, so if you don't buy the book, this is what I kind of recommend all of you guys to do. If you buy the book, your education is going to start today. You're going to get access to my trading room. You're going to be there today. You're going to be there tomorrow morning. You're going to see us make money, have fun, see the traders, and you guys could tell everyone at 11 o'clock how much money you made. So that's going to be the fun part of it. So how do you start learning to make money today? All you need to do, uh, call our office, 877-70-CYBER, talk to an education advisor, or better yet, I'll give you the link, you can register online. So you've got two great opportunities. Now, before everyone goes, just want to kind of, and before we end our, uh, our meeting, I just want to kind of give everybody an some last minute advice, okay? There are three types of people here at Cybertree University, three types of people. The first person is, is the one that's going to move forward with Cybertree University, see what trading's about, make a small investment, and see how it goes. The other people that are here are going to finally realize that trading's not for you, and you're going to go back to your day job. Okay, and I'm great that you, you do that because you just saved yourself a lot of money. But the ones I'm more concerned about are the ones that are going to be self-taught. Let me just give you guys advice. If you're not going to get a mentor and you're not going to make a small investment and sit there and learn the right way, and continue to learn. Just always remember, trading is a 90% failure rate. So please, try not to be fall into that category. Now before we go, guys, any last minute uh, questions? Let me actually bring over that link for you. It's going to go to Cyber Training University website. And um, here's the link for the book. It's right on the home page. And if you click right here, you can register for the free live trading with me tomorrow. So you got two great packages, and let me just put that in there for you. That's the link for that, and this is the link if you just want to come to the free live trading with Fausto. All right, so let me just answer some questions here. Uh, which brokerage firms you consider as a good deal? Well, if you go over here where it says resources on our homepage, there's a couple of brokerage firms that we recommend. Um, FXEM, Thinkorswim, LifeSuite, Trade Monster, eSignal. You know, there's a couple of good ones. There's not, you know, there's other ones, two other partners. There's not too many of them that offer direct access. But once again, before you consider doing that, you got to learn first. Okay? Uh, is it possible to have only a trial? I already bought the book. Yes, Martin, you could do that. You could buy the trial. It's only uh, $29 if you just want the trial. Call the office and talk to one of the education advisors, and they'll get you registered for that, okay? What brokerage firm? Uh, oh, we already answered that one. Um, David, once again, uh, this question is, which brokerage firm you consider um, to be a good deal? Listen, the thing about good deals, it, they're not... The, the ones that are a little bit more are the ones that are the good deals. The ones that you think are a good deal, are you, you're going to look at price of ticket charges, and that's those, are the one, those are the bad deal ones. And I'm being honest with you. You know, you can't, you know what? The difference between a Ford Mustang and, and, and a Ferrari is probably about $200,000, okay? You want a good deal? Well, guess what? Buy, buy the Mustang, but you're not going to win the Indy 500 with it, racing against a bunch of Ferraris. You know, but that's what you're looking to do. You're looking to run a business. You're looking to make money, not looking to save money. So these are the things that you're going to learn at Cyber Trading University. Um, what type of uh, mentoring programs do you do you uh, recommend offer? Well, law. That's an excellent question. Um, if you click where it says education, you can find all our educational courses from stocks, forex, options, workshops, free ones. Just click where it says education. I recommend you to call the office, talk to one of the education advisors. And they'll be they'll be able to advise you to that. Uh, question is: I bought a PDF uh, a PDF version of it. How do I get a personal autograph hard copy? Call the office, and they'll be able to tell you a little bit more about how to get that. Uh, what do you think of forex uh, dot com as a direct? Uh, Gillis, I, actually, I would recommend highly uh, FXCM, and actually. If you, just to let you know, if you register with Cyber Training University right here, 
Um, FXCM is actually, we, we're actually teaching a free course, uh, not free course, um, FXCM is doing a grant right here where you can get a $4,000 course um, that they'll pay for th um, if you, uh, through us, if you have an account with them. So, uh, you know, when it comes down to money, if you get a broker churn to pay for your training, why not, right? Um, I'm with them uh, for my futures. Okay, well, like I said, there's a lot of futures brokers that are also out there. But talk to one of the education advisors and they'll, and they'll advise you a little bit more. Any other questions? How do I register to get the promo? Once again, right on the home page, right here on Cyber Training University, you'll see this banner right here. Just click on it. Or you can register. Um, there's a couple other events over here on the right. To get the free courses right here on the right. If you want to get the paid uh, with the book and the two weeks of my live professional trading that runs all day, click on this middle one. And, and the great part about being in the live trading room, you're going, to meet, you're going to meet the hundreds of traders that I've trained that are in there all day uh, that are trading for a living. So, and you'll see people making money all day. And you'll learn, and you're going to learn a lot. So, uh, Do we send the books overseas? Yes, we do, Law. Absolutely. I know shipping's going to be a little bit more money for you, but, uh, but yes, we do ship all over the world. Uh, Jeff, if you, if you want to learn futures, the best person to go, to go see would be Tom Busby at DTI. Uh, can you order the book today and delay the trading room uh, for the start, Robert? You can. Uh, what I recommend you to do is when you talk to an education advisor at Cyber Training University, let him know that, and then he'll, and then he'll work something out with you. Okay? Uh, Law says, who do you recommend uh, for, for op stock options trading? Well, we have a great, us obviously, I mean, we have a great options instructor. Uh, if you click over here, Greg McDermott is one of our options instructor right here. And uh, basically, he was a, one of the floor traders on the Philadelphia Exchange, you know, trading cruel and everything else right there. You can read a little bit more and uh, about options trading. Thanks a lot, Alex. Thanks for coming. Prop trading, Keith. Once again, if you want to learn about proprietary trading, talk to our education advisors. They'll tell you a couple of companies who we recommend. Why don't we, t why don't we teach futures? Because, you know, once again, uh, when it comes to a futures uh, trader, you know, um, we kind of recommend everyone to go to uh, uh, DTI when it comes to that. No problem, Alexei. I look forward to seeing you there. Try it out, and you know, once again, if you like it, I think you'll be very, very happy with it. All right, any other questions? Once again, everyone, um, I know everyone's not going to go out there and, and, you know, purchase something, but just, you know, I know you're maybe just, just trying to kick the tires around a little bit and sample a couple of things out there and seeing what's best for you, but just always keep in mind. Um, it's not a matter of if you're going to get an education, it's a matter of when. Because the thing is this, if you're not going to learn and you think education is expensive, try ignorance. It is a lot cheaper to have someone just explain it than, had, than trying to figure out the hard way and that's losing money. And the worst part about losing money, if you don't know why you lost, how are you going to prevent that again? Uh, Jim, the trading room is $300 a month to be in the trading room after, after the trial if you want to continue. And there's no fee. If you, if you don't, listen, we don't bill you after, after two weeks. If you're not, you let us know if you want to move forward with it. <laughs> if you don't think we're worth it, that's fine. But at least you have at least two weeks to, to experiment and see what it's all about. All right, so uh, who might the, oh, I think I answered that. That's the same question that Jim had. All right, everyone, listen, thank you very much for coming. Thanks for sticking around. Sorry I went a little bit later than usual, but, uh, you know, uh, for the ones that are going to be joining me in the cyber group room, we have a live audio broadcast that's going to happen at 2.30, which we're going to talk about the stock picks. We're going to trade going to the close. So just make sure that if you do subscribe and do register for the book promo with the cyber group trial, uh, is that you get in at the 2.30 time frame because you're going to learn a lot 
going into this afternoon. The market's been really hot lately, especially going into a big holiday weekend. Thanks, everyone, and I look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow, if not in the trading room, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Uh, for the live trading with Fausto. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.